Hi guys, it's late June and this is an update on my electric tomato. And for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, I have a video that explains what an electric tomato is. But it's here in my background right now and you can see that this tomato is as tall as I am. So this has been a very successful little experiment. Now here in mid-Michigan, we normally don't plant our gardens till about late May around Memorial Day when the threat of frost is really low. So you can see in my garden right now that I have tomatoes and they're, uh, the tallest ones are about knee high. But this electric tomato here has tomatoes on it that are about a size of maybe a walnut or a little bit larger. And I'm thrilled to death that this is working. But I almost had a complete disaster. And that disaster was a fungal disease called late blight. And late blight I've only seen in my yard two times. About 20 years ago it got into my garden and by the time we realized it was there it had wiped out the plants and this happened over a period of about one or two days. So we picked all the green tomatoes and took them in the house hoping that uh, they would be okay but they developed disease symptoms very quickly and we had a complete loss of our crop. Now the reason I think I had that problem is because late blight likes cool wet weather. The longer leaves are wet on plants the greater the chance of getting this particular disease or other fungal diseases. It prefers temperatures in the 50s, which we have in May, and plenty of water, which we can also have in May. So uh, it's a really serious disease to the tune of about six billion dollars a year to agriculture worldwide. And uh, between 1845 and 1857 there were a number of blight problems over in Europe and it resulted in um, about a million deaths due to starvation and about two million people from various countries, especially Ireland, to immigrate to other countries. And if you are of Irish descent, there's a good possibility that some of your ancestors may have come over there, over here to the United States, because of this particular disease. Now if you're wondering what this is behind me, this is the little greenhouse cage that I made to protect the plant in the spring, and you can get more details about that in the, the first video. But anyway, going back to the disease, when the disease starts to infect the plant, you will start to see gray-green spots that look kind of water-soaked. But they soon get a larger in size and they turn brown. And as the disease progresses, it will infect the stems. And I happened to look out the kitchen window one morning and I said, man, that plant does not look happy at all. And so I went out there and I took one look at the stems and I said, oh, oh, I had this disease. And really, when you get that disease, but the only thing you can do is prune it out. That's it. And what you should do is put it in a plastic bag and ship it off to the landfill. And it's a good idea to double bag it. Now, if you don't do anything, what will happen is the spores will be released, they will infect your neighbor's plants, and then it keeps spreading until it finally gets to a susceptible farm that has crops where uh, they can have a full-blown problem, and then it causes a real problem. And as I may have mentioned before, it costs agriculture annually six billion dollars. That's a lot of cash. So I pruned it all out and then I started treating it with a fungicide. I gave it some extra fertilizer and I also made sure that I gave it plenty of water and lo and behold the plant recovered. I was totally flabbergasted because I thought I was done for the season and the electric tomato lost its electricity. But anyway, uh, it made it and um, in terms of what I did for treatment there are a number of different products that you can use. One is copper sulfate, and there are some products that are organic, and there are some other copper sulfates that don't have organic okay, but uh, that is a preventative. It's good for bacterial and fungal diseases. And also there's another one called chlorothalonil, and it's normally found in a product called daconil. And basically I use those two together, and I've been treating it about once a week, and it has done a good job and I have pretty much kept all diseases at bay. And, and those fungicides will also control things like septoria leaf spot uh, and early blight and anthracnose and things of that sort. So th they're good materials to use. Now there's a um, plant pathologist at Cornell University that suggests using a product called actinovate which is a beneficial bacteria. And this is also used as a preventative spray. Some other products that have been used include phosphoric acid and also uh, they've used something called Serenade, although the, the jury's out about how well Serenade works. 
and uh, some references talk about horticultural oils, but I haven't used those. So this really worked well. I'm very happy that this project worked, and it might be something you want to try, but again, uh, I caution you, this is just for fun, and in the first video I talk about what it'll cost. But one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to save all the tomatoes, weigh them and find out what the current price of the tomatoes are, and find out what this will produce for me over the course of the season, and see if it was worth it economically. Now, this plant has a lot of tomatoes on it already, whereas my other plants in the garden are just now getting flowers on them and are still quite small. So from a standpoint of getting a jump on the season, this can work. And uh, next year, what I plan on doing is making a slightly larger cage. And I want to do that for a couple of reasons. One, uh, I did have some frost problems late in the season when this plant was already large enough to where when I put the cage on top of it, it was scraping and breaking some of the leaves. So I want one a little bit larger and I'll be able to uh, put this entire plant in here and maybe I can protect it into the fall and I'm hopefully going to be able to harvest tomatoes into November for instance which around here they're dead by then so uh, the plant is unplugged right now it, it does not have electricity going to it the heating cables are not heating the soil because it's now warm enough to keep this plant under control but as it gets cold again if I can keep the diseases under control I'm going to see just how far I can push it in getting tomatoes from this plant and so stay tuned we'll come back and talk about it a little bit more later and thank you for watching if you like this video please let your friends know about it and please subscribe because i plan on producing at least five videos on a wide variety of plant-based topics so stay tuned this is gary i'll see you later